let's review everything we've done in the last few videos and then take it a few steps from there. So let's say we have a reality that right now, and this isn't the actual exchange rate, but I'm just using these numbers because they're nice, simple numbers. The current exchange rate is 10, 10 won per 1 US per 1 US dollar. And now we're in a reality where the Chinese government and the Chinese central bank wants to keep this pegged. So it wants to lock this. It wants to lock this exchange rate right over here. But the reality is more is being sold to the US. More is being exported from China to the US than the other way around. And so that leads to this weird dynamic that we've studied in the last few videos. So this is China right here. This is China, and then you have the United States right over here. United States. And let's say at this exchange rate right over here, you have, you have, let's say that you have goods coming from China to the US. Actually, let me do it in that same magenta color. So these are Chinese goods. So these are Chinese goods. Chinese, Chinese goods. And then we are paying for those Chinese goods in dollars, and those dollars are being sent to China. And so we are paying, so let's say we pay in this time period, let's say it's a year, let's say that the $100, $100, $100 per one dollars sent to sent to China for for the goods. And this is really just a summary of what we saw in the last few videos. And let's say on the other side of this equation, some goods are sent from the US to China. Some are exported. So US, US goods are exported to China. And then we sell them in China. And then we get some yuan in return that go back to the United States. And of course, the reality, the money seldom is actually sitting on a ship going across the Pacific. It's all in these bank accounts. They can be wired back and forth. The actual exchanges are essentially happening in the, in, on the internet, not really you know, in any physical location. But this is a good way to visualize it. So the US goods are being sold in China, and then the US producer is going to get yuan. And let's say for their goods, they get 500. They get 500. 500 won. So if all of these people were to just convert, and you actually don't know what the equilibrium price would be because the demand changes depending on what the price is in each of the countries. But if you really wanted to convert these $100 that the Chinese producer get into won at 10 to 1, you would need you would need. So we're going to assume that this peg is what what at least the Chinese government wants. So you would need so this guy needs let me put it here. Needs needs 1000 needs 1000 won in order to convert all of his $100 at 10 won per dollar now this producer the US producer only has only has let me do it in a different color only has only has and I should put the quotes around needs not around the won now this US producer only has 500 500 won to convert to convert into dollars. And we've seen this multiple times, but I really want to reinforce it of, about how these currencies would fluctuate. The demand for yuan is much higher than the supply for yuan. And we could do the exact same argument with the dollar, that the demand for dollars is much lower than the supply for dollars. At this exchange rate, if we assumed a peg, this would only be $50 that we need to convert into while there's $100 of actual supply. But let's just focus on the yuan. They need 1,000 yuan if at this exchange rate. There's only 1,000 yuan that can be converted into dollars. And if we had a floating exchange rate, that would increase the demand for yuan, and then this number would go down, or another way to view it, either that number goes down, or this number over here goes up. You could say it, the yuan would become more expensive, which means maybe it's 9 yuan per dollar, or 8 yuan per dollar, or it could go the other way. For 10 yuan, instead of a dollar, you get a dollar 10, or a dollar 20, or a dollar 30, either way. Now, in order for this lock and for this peg to occur, we saw in the last video that the Chinese central bank needs to intervene. So the Chinese central bank, 
the Chinese central bank. Remember, where are the excess where are the excess dollars? They're over here. Let me make it clear. There's there's a hundred dollars over here. There's a hundred dollars over here that need to be converted into yuan. We have five hundred yuan over here. We have the five hundred yuan. Five hundred yuan that needs to be converted into dollars. Now the Chinese government wants this hundred dollars to be converted into a thousand yuan. So what he does, or what they do, is they say, okay, fifty dollars of this, fifty dollars of this hundred dollars can be essentially traded for these five hundred yuan. So let me draw a two-way arrow there. Fifty dollars, fifty dollars goes to the American producer, and then the five hundred yuan. The 500 won go to the Chinese producer for, for in exchange for that $50. Obviously, this isn't coordinated. It's not like matchmaking. It's not like someone said, "Hey, you give this money to them." And they, but it, it, essentially, there will only be $50 to convert into the won, and then the other $50, the other $50. Let me make it clear. The other $50. The other $50 will go to the Chinese central bank. Will go to the Chinese central bank. So let me draw the central bank. Chinese. Chinese central. Central bank, and they will just print one and give another 500 won. And they will just give another 500 won. And this is exactly what happened in the last video. I drew it a little bit different. All I'm showing is is to uh, make up for the the lack of supply of won. They needed 1,000 won. There was only 500 won to convert. In order to make that up, the Chinese central government prints the extra Chinese currency and buys dollars with it. So it's essentially it's essentially sucking up. It's sucking up the excess dollars, right? This was excess dollars right over here, so that the dollar does not weaken. It is, it is sucking, it is sucking up extra, extra dollars, so that the so that the supply for dollars isn't uh, so high that it weakens, or so that the yuan strengthens, and so that way the Chinese can maintain. The trade imbalance. They can continue to export more goods than they are importing. Now, what is the effect of this, though? And we saw this. In order to maintain this currency peg, while there is this trade imbalance, the Chinese central bank keeps printing yuan, and they keep accumulating dollars. They keep accumulating dollars. And if they ever stop, if they ever stop accumulating dollars, so it's not like they can just hold the dollars they have and the peg will hold. If they ever stop accumulating dollars, then the peg will break down. They have to do this every time period. They have to actively participate in the market, printing yuan and buying dollars. They're doing it every day to maintain the peg. Not every day. Maybe sometimes when it, it, it won't fluctuate on their own. But if the yuan is getting expensive, they actually maintain a range. They will buy dollars. So they're just buying. They're just accumulating more and more of these dollars. And now this is where it gets interesting. What does the Chinese central bank do with that cash? Now, like anybody, cash is useless. You're not getting any interest on it. It's just, it's really, it's just paper. It, it, it allows you to buy other things that could give you some income or could give you some value. So what the Chinese central bank does, it doesn't hold actual dollar bills. It goes and tries to buy the safest US denominated asset it can. And another thing, not only does it care about safety, so it cares about so it wants to go to a safe asset. It wants to go to a safe dollar denominated asset, dollar denominated, which means that you would buy it in dollars, and if it produces interest, the interest would be in dollars. Safe dollar denominated, safe dollar denominated asset, and it's also doing this on a massive, massive scale in the hundreds of billions of dollars, and actually the reserve is in the trillions of dollars now. So it's on a massive scale. So they can't just go buy a, a random company's stock, one that won't be safe, but also they would just drive the price up to infinity if they used they used this many dollars. So it has to be a very liquid asset. It has to be a very liquid asset, a very liquid asset, one that has a very deep market where the people trading in that market, it really is in the tens and hundreds of billions of dollars. And there's really only one asset that meets those requirements, and that's US Treasuries. US, US 
treasuries. And this isn't the only thing they will do, but this is the great majority. So what the Chinese central bank does with all of these excess dollars, it essentially buys US treasuries. So it, it gives the dollars away, or not gives away, it buys, it sends the dollars to the people who are holding the US treasuries, and then it gets US treasuries in return. It gets US treasuries, US treasuries. Now, as a bit of review, and I've done a few videos on this, what are US treasuries? US treasury bills and bonds are loans to the federal government. So these are, and that's maybe how you should view it, these are loans to the federal government. Loans to federal government. Government. These bonds, these treasury bonds, or these treasury bills that they're getting, these certificates, these certificates are essentially, in fact, they are IOUs, IOUs from the USA. Not to get cheesy with the acronyms, these are literally IOUs from the US government, and the US government will pay interest. They are essentially, so just to make it all clear of what's going, what's going on, they're printing money, they're accumulating dollars, they're buying those, they're using those dollars to go out into either the open market or even directly from the Treasury, from the US Treasury, and they are buying US Treasuries, which essentially means they are lending this money, this is, they are lending this money to the US government. So they are lending to the US, the US government. Now I'll leave you there in this video, and maybe you want to think about it a little bit before you even watch the next one. But in the next one, we'll talk a little bit about what that even means. What happens if you have this big holder of US dollars, this huge holder of US dollars going out there and buying treasuries and being willing to lend money to the US government? Think about, and in particular, think about what would happen to interest rates and what those low interest rates impact would have on the rest of the US economy and on debt in general.